Hello, YouTube. Okay, we are on to step two. Stand is done. Tonight we're going to drill this thing. So it's a 90 gallon Aquion tank. I've got a eShops overflow box. Now this thing. This is probably a little on the law, small side for this tank. It's rated up 200 gallons. This is a 90 gallon. So, but we'll be fine. I don't need a whole ton of flow going through my sump anyways. I don't have a large sump, so that's what we got. So we're gonna go ahead and mark out the center for the overflow, and then I'm gonna drill two returns. Got it out of the box. It comes with an instruction manual, drain line, diamond drill bit, 60 millimeter. So the overflow comes in two pieces. This is the weir. This is where the water inside the tank raises up, overflows into that, overflows into it. comes into the overflow box and then down the two drain lines. Be, either one of them could be my main drain and the other one will be the emergency drain. Emergency drain meaning one of these gets blocked, it filled up, it can now drain through this um, to prevent the overflow box from overflowing. So let's take it apart, take the lid off. It's nice to see that it comes with the lid. See that it was tight and I turned it counterclockwise a little bit and it loosened up the thread on this. So pull this apart. This is our drilling template. And this is made, you'll see when we get it on the tank. If you put it right on the top, this is designed for a rimless tank. There's supposed to be these guides here to help you if you have a rim tank. I've watched some other videos where we'll have to do something different, but this is also what we'll use as our jig. And so when we put it on here, we'll put the diamond bit, see how it just fits right in there? When we start drilling, this keeps it from moving around, uh, scratching the glass, so it gives a nice clean hole. But when you saw me pulling this apart, I've been into this before, so that was not exactly how it came from the manufacturer. This gasket actually goes in between here and the box. And so once you drill your hole, this gasket is what seals it, keeps it from leaking. it apart because I need this to get started. Okay, next step. When I bought this from the LFS, I asked him to do the polarized check with the laptop, or sorry, the temper tempered glass check with the laptop, and they did. But before I drill it, I just want to verify it. So we got the back glass. Turns out my four-year-old son is the only one with a pair of polarized glasses in the house. And I'm going to show you how I can tell this is not a tempered aquarium. So you see I got this monitor, the laptop down there. You see through the lenses. You see as I turn it, they black out. As I turn back, they turn clear again. That means it is not tempered glass and we are good to drill. Thank goodness. Okay. Okay. We're starting to take our measurements, and I've seen some other videos that talk about this, but I want to go over it real quick. So, like I mentioned, 
the template comes with these measurements that you're supposed to be able to use to match up with your trim on your aquarium to adjust the template down to get your holes right for your, the hole you're about to drill. Now, I know from other people's videos that this is actually really tight if you go with this and you want to have a little bit of wiggle room like you see here. I've got maybe an eighth of an inch there between the trim if I were to drill the box as it is right now. But I've got the template sitting on top. I squared it up with the trim. And I'm looking down. You see how tight that would be? I mean, it's not going to be perfect. Maybe it would be right up against it, but I mean, it puts it right up against the trim, if not too tight. And once you drill this hole, you're really limited on how much. You have a little bit of wiggle room, but not much. So I am going to mark it and uh, use my paint pen to draw my circle in there and then adjust my template to match up with my circle that I'm doing. Um, see, I've got a line measured right to the center. I measured the center of the box, squared it up on that. Eyeballed an eighth of an inch, looks pretty straight to me. I'm gonna draw, reach in there with my paint pen, draw that circle, remove the box, line up my template with the circle I just drew, clamp it down, we should be good to start drilling. Here's an important catch. So I did just, just that, drew my circle, and then to double check my work, I took the weir from the inside, butted it up all the way against the trim right here. So it would be the highest possible position. Notice that. My hole is too high. It needs to go further down, about an eighth of an inch. I'll probably do a quarter just to give myself some extra space. Second try. I don't know if you can see that, but it is perfect. You've got a little bit of wiggle room on either side, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe an eighth all the way around. So, but sliding it around back and forth, it, everything fits within the circle and it's uptight against. Well, I've got about sixteenth of an inch gap from the top here, so I'm good with it. I'm gonna square it off and we're gonna get drilling. Okay, we got it clamped up. Had to flip it around for the drilling, so I can get my clamps on the plastic. Notice I got the arrows right there, and my line goes straight down the middle, lines up with my hole, square. All right, now the scary part. My first time doing this. Okay, we're all prepped. I tried something new that I've not I've seen Actually, I've never seen anybody do this, but some people use plumber's putty around their hole when they're drilling to trap the water in there. Because um, you're supposed to continuously pour water as you're drilling helps keep the, keep the temperature down, prevent it from, from cracking, also helps remove the dust, stops it from getting airborne so you're not breathing in glass particles. So you're constantly pouring water, and my thought was build a dam around it with plumber's putty and see if it helped keep it cool and removing the waste. Um, but other people I've seen, like I said, have used it. Um, others just spray water on it, and I thought, well, maybe I'll combine the two and see if I come up with something new. Now, I'm not sure how well, uh, if water will come up underneath the trim, if there's any sealant here. It'll stop it and keep the dam. I suspect it might kind of come in here, but also notice I'm doing this in the winter time and I live in a state that's cold, snow outside. So I don't want a whole lot of water everywhere in my garage and I think it'll just be cleaner. So got my water, got my drill, fully charged battery. Let's do it. Some things I learned, 
drill bit, the diamond tipped portion is just a little bit bigger than the hole. So I tried to put it through and it bit and then jerked it. Didn't scratch the tank, it wasn't through yet. But what I had to do is take the template off and then um, bring it in from the underside, attach the drill to it, start spinning. If you're wondering if my little dam thing works, it works awesome. Definitely keeps lots of fluid in there, as you can see. Keeps a puddle in it. Um, it's obviously seeping around the side, like I was mentioning, but definitely plenty of water in there to keep it cool. So I'm going to keep going. So far, so good. Success! Not too shabby, guys. Not too shabby at all. Moment of truth. Let's see if I got any chips. We got a pretty bad chip. Maybe a quarter of the thickness of the glass. So, unfortunate. I think what happened was when I got to the last bit. I started feeling it pull through, like when it fell through, the drill punched through and probably chipped out that piece right there. But the <clears throat> gasket on the overflow on the inside should. We are good. All right, keep going. And there we go. What I did to compensate for that chip is, you notice it was in the right corner here. So it had a little bit of play, so I pushed the box all the way up as far as I could this way to give it most, the gasket most contact with the glass. We're committed to it now, so I guess we'll find out in a little bit if it, uh, it's not going to work. Come down onto the next holes. These are my return lines. They are slightly smaller, three quarter inch. We've marked them out using my electrical tape to center it up. So, don't know how this is going to work. We're going to give it a shot, but notice that that fits perfectly in there. So we'll use that as our guide. See how it goes. Now, I will only be using the tape just enough to score it. Once it's scored, I'll pull the tape out and the bit will sit in there. The tape just keeps it from chattering around. Now I have two rolls of tape, so I don't know, I'm pretty sure that the water is going to make this cardboard swell, and I may only get one use out of each one, so we'll give her a shot. Hole number two done. That worked really well. I hope there's no chips on the bottom because my plan was perfect. <clears throat> this held it up perfect, it didn't chatter around. That looks pretty clean. Um, I scored it, took this out, filled this up with more water, started drilling, went slow, slow as I could. Towards the bottom, it started to bite a little bit. So I eased it up even more, just went as slow as I could. So we'll peel it back and see what, we, what we're looking like. Much better, much, much, much better. Just a little bit of chipping, I mean, it's my first time, guys, so it's a learning experience. But you know, what's nice is these bulkheads are bigger than, smaller than the hole, so you got a little wiggle room. So if you got a bigger chip here, you can move it around. Last one. Here we go. <clears throat> Even got to use the same black tape. 
and we're through. Last hole took longer. I think my drill bit was getting a little dull towards the end. But uh, let's take a look. I guess the old saying goes, third time's the charm. That's definitely the best one. A little chippage, but compared to the other two, not nearly as bad. Okay, that's a wrap for the night. Three hills, three holes drilled. Pretty good. Starting to look like a fish tank. Next couple days, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. Painting the black, the back black. Once the back is painted, this thing is ready to go sit on top of that thing, which will be a pretty exciting progression. Fish tank on fish tank stand, and then on to plumbing. Thanks for watching. Have a good night.